unlike in Gen 1 OU, where there is a big three, three Pokemon that are absolutely mandatory on your team, and your team is incredibly bad if you don't have it, we do not have that for Generation Jumble Season 2, as it is way more like a Big 5, similar to what you see in Gen 3. Those members of the Big 5 are Starmie, Alakazam, Tauros, Iron Hands, and Chansey. And at the moment, we are still trying to debate who is the 6th best Pokemon between Snorlax, Naganadel, and Kudra. Now, the reason why there's a big five is just because with the way the meta is now, all of the Pokemon are less mandatory, except for one, debatably. By far, the best Pokemon in this format is Alakazam. With more fighting types like Iron Hands, Sneasler, Zamazenta, as well as most of these Pokemon being very fast in general, such as the Ganadel, Sneasler again, we also have like Walking Wake, you have Salamence, etc. It just makes Alakazam a lot better, especially since most of the Sword Stance users are like fighting types. But even with some of the other ones, like let's say like the bug types like Armaldo, in general, Alakazam being super fast and having Reflect is really good. And unlike Starmie, who has a little bit too much coverage to where it can't really afford to use Reflect, Alakazam very much can. So not only is it good for just being faster than everything, but having a large special also means that it just tanks hits a lot better than Starmie can. Which is really great for what's say, a critical in the Ganato Dragon Pulse. And I think that's the main reason why. I'm sure there's other reasons that I'm just forgetting as to why most people agree Alakazam is the best Pokemon. But the others are also very good too. Starmie, Tauros, Iron Hands, and Chansey are all fantastic. And it's extremely hard to justify not using one on your team. But the reason why I call this a big five is because... I think your team is just genuinely hot garbage if you don't have at least one of these. You need at least one in order to compete with the meta. But luckily, like they're all very versatile in nature. And even Alakazam, you could just replace with just two different psychic types. But having a psychic type is definitely mandatory. You let me know in the comments if you think this is better or worse than the actual Gen 1. But what could we have a lot of replays to go over now? I didn't bother counting them, but I know it's going to be a lot. And we're going to be seeing some more newcomers. So Josh, Shrek, Sceptile, Boing and Sotina. This should be fun. Now, as usual, we have a Weed Alcazan versus Starmie. Seen that a lot. And both of these are still pretty great re leads. But for me personally, I don't really like Alcazan as a lead. I know it's working pretty well for this replay, but I just think it's not good to get your Alakazam paralyzed so early. I'd rather just go for Jinx or Starmie, or even Galvantula, to be honest. But it worked pretty well there. Uh, switching in the Rhydon in order to tank the Tauros Hyper Beam, that's good. But Shrek Sceptile seems like they're new, because... Earthquake is generally not the best move to use for right on. Most of the time, it's definitely Wizard. I am glad they got a critical... What's it called? Glad they got a critical... Um... Hyper Beam. I'm not sure that was hard to think of. Because, like, I oftentimes get worried when I see new people and, like, get some bad Gen 1 luck. Because it makes me worried they're not going to play more. But stuff like that can definitely even it out. And that, I'm surprised Psychic didn't kill there. Okay. Alakazam does, does in fact finish off a Seismic Toss. And with their Alakazam being... What's it called? Like, not paralyzed? It's definitely going to be... Uh, initially a better, th bigger... Better for... Yeah, there we go. Uh, that... So Cena's Alakazam, it needs to switch out. You go into Chance. The Chansey. They can tank some moves pretty good. And pretty good nicknames all around, to be honest. Before just switch back into Alakazam. Seismic Toss doesn't really do a lot. So, 
Are we going to see him using Psychic yet? Well, who knows? Was he going to take a lot of damage? Also, this is just another Alakazam Enchanty mirror. So, let's skip this a little bit. But what if something interesting happens? Okay, the Enchanty Chansey goes out. Alakazam does get the chance to heal. That's good. But those special drops are definitely annoying. Okay. We got a little bit of back and forth here, as we do for a lot of these. Also, I'm just going to give you a spoiler alert. If you're to see a lot of Sotina replays, like in this video, because I believe like she's like the main one who was like, where you playing yesterday, as well as playing a lot of games today. But there we go, that was GG. Uh, I, I like how she was being nice. She also made really good fan art that you should definitely check out. I'll probably show it in my community tab. Round 2 with these two. And we have Starmie Weed again. But this time, Satina which switches to Armaldo. Oh, Rock's White just kills Vespa Quinn. That's actually pretty good tech. And Body Swim does a lot of damage. As you can see there, I don't like Body Swim on Iron Hands because it's I just think it's not enough. Just, just too little damage where even with the Sword Stands, you don't get a guaranteed KO on Alkazam. You start me the fuck out the Thunder Wave. And I guess you're going to try going for Seismic Toss, which- Oh, never mind. Said you're going to be hit with a Critical Blizzard. That's really bad. But Blizzard will finish off the Gudra. You go back into Alkazam, you can Revenge Kill with Seismic Toss. They go to Tauros, they miss the Hyper Beam. Uh, our model resists the Hyper Beam real easily. You go for Sword Stance, you're now faster. Go for Rock Swipe, which is a 2 hit KO. A critical body swim will hurt, but it's fine. Going in the Iron Hands, they go for the Sword Stance, very greedy. Switch back into the Gonado, go for Fire Blast, you're fully paralyzed. They go for Dragon Pulse, you're taken out. You go into Iron Hands, Earthquake can take this pretty easily. Fire Blast does not get the burn. So now you go into Alkazam. That could ease your revenge kill. Going into your own Alkazam, they decide just to go with their Chansey. And yeah, when the last two Pokemon on their team are Chansey and Alkazam, we definitely gotta skip this a little bit. I'm gonna say... We don't know what Zotina's last Pokemon is, so it's kinda hard to tell who's winning this. It really just depends on Paralysis luck. Okay, the last Pokemon is Gengar again. But the Gengar was put to sleep. That's not good. Okay, gets put to sleep again. Can the Gengar wake up in time? Uh, not doesn't look like it. And yeah, the two away from Alakazam is scary. That's one of the reasons why. It's so gosh, gosh darn good. Okay, round three. And this time we have a different weed. We have Galvantula. Looks like Strix Sceptile is running pretty fast. Uh, Iron Hands goes for the... I just realized it's called Iron Dance. It's actually very good. Slash doesn't do that much of Iron Hands, unfortunately. The Galvantula does get taken out. Going to Alakazam, they're forced to switch. You get the special drop. No, you don't. You paralyze it. Uh, you They paralyze you back. That's a fair trade. You go into Swellbro. This Swellbro is actually really hard to deal with. Especially since the... Galvantula is in fact taken out. They go in the Iron Hand. You go for another Amnesia. They go for Sword Sands, but I think it's... Oh, okay, you just go for Blizzard. Uh, ironically, that crit definitely kind of saved you. Another Blizzard does in fact kill, though. They go into the Gonadel. Hyper Beam does not get the kill. They go for Rest. Honestly, this the Gonadel got really lucky there. And now, you switch out to Alakazam, that's fine, you can survive this Earthquake easily. Then you go into Swellbro, you try to go for Special Drops, or are you just- Oh my god, that's actually good. You get another Special Drop, yes you do. Uh, you try to go for Recover, okay. Well, you're forced to go into Swellbro, but you're just not getting a chance to wake up, which is just extremely annoying. That crit does not make it better. You finally wake up, but Seismic Toss will be enough to kill you. Honestly, 
I think Strict Sceptile right now is actually like showing a good case for why Seismic Toss might be the best standard move for Alkazam. Because it really is doing a lot of good consistent damage there. And that burn from the Fire Blast does help the God Adele survive. That's good. Critical Hyper Beam does kill, and I do think the crit did in fact matter. The Ganadel outspeeds, it doesn't kill, but it puts the other Ganadel in red, so it definitely uh, did its job. Alkazam's fully paralyzed, that's unfortunate. Hyper Beam does finish it off, going the Gudra. It can tank the Dragon Pulse, you kill the Ganadel with an Earthquake. So now you're just going to Alkazam, but this Gudra is faster, which is going to be annoying. You might okay. You have okay, you have recover. You as long as you don't get fully parried, you can survive this. That too. Okay, so here we go. This is still anyone's game, really. A lot of it depends on what the last Pokemon are for each of them. Uh, okay, so their last Pokemon is Salamence. That's interesting, but a critical earthquake will be enough to kill. They go in the Iron Hands. Earthquake is not enough. They miss Hyper Beam. That's unfortunate. Earthquake will kill again. And the last Pokemon is Sneasler. Okay, that could potentially change things. Earthquake is not enough. I'm not even sure if Sword Tense is worth it there. Okay, so Strict Septile does win the match. Honestly, he had some pretty cool Pokemon as well. Not gonna lie. Now we have Shelly Yu-Gi-Oh! versus Creeper. We have the Galvantula lead, which is always pretty fun. Because they paralyze each other and try to go for Slash. They go in the Iron Hands, you go for Slash. It's the best thing you could do to this Iron Hands, but you just can't do a lot of damage in general. I would probably switch out if I were you, but it's a little too late for that. Go in the Starmie. Going for Psychic does a lot of damage, but not enough. But Hyper Beam barely uh, doesn't kill. They go in the Alkazam. Uh, Starmie's outsped and taken out. You go in the Vespaquin. This is a huge threat. You go for Attack Order. You don't get the crit. You go for it again. Creeper goes for Slash. You don't see that a lot on Armado. That's interesting. They go in the Chansey. You go for Attack Order. You do get the crit. Does a lot of damage. You go for Ice Beam, Vespaquin survives, takes out another Pokemon. Taking out both Iron Hands and Vespaquin is huge. Or, or Iron Hands and Chansey, I mean, sorry. Armaldo goes for a Bug Bite, does a heck of a lot of damage. They stay in, you don't get the kill. Armaldo finishes off the Alkazam. They go into Galvantua, but you outspeed, you can get some good damage in. You go into Rhydon. Rhydon can just finish off with a Rock Sway. Armado doesn't want to deal with this either, but it has no choice. Earthquake does decent damage. You go for your own Earthquake, but Rock Sway will be super effective. You go for it. Doesn't look like it, but you do get the crit. Taking out Armado. So now it just depends on what the last Pokemon is. Rock Sway will do decent damage. Blizzard takes out the Rhydon. And last but not least, you have Tauros. Tauros is definitely going to be a big threat here, especially with that Critical Body Slam. Now, you don't get the freeze. Body slam does not kill. They go for self destruct, meaning that the game ends in a tie. Okay, that's gonna. I haven't even thought about the idea of ties. That's gonna be funny for the tournament. Uh, going for psychic, getting the guaranteed KO on Sneasler. Interesting, you still go for. Oh, misclick. Alright, that makes a lot more sense now. The Ganondale eats up the Toxic Spikes. Uh, Alkazam takes a lot of damage from Earthquake, actually. But it's fine. Because you manage to get the Reflect off. You're basically unkillable. Going to Galvantua, which is unfortunately a two-shot. Uh, it's really difficult if you're Strict Sceptile right now. I'm gonna put this on... Hyper fast until I see something different and then put it on fast. Going to the Iron Hands, Body Swim doesn't get paralysis, that's scary. Going to Starmie, going for Psychic, you don't get the KO. Hyper Beam does get the KO though. 
switching into the Ganadel, Dragon Pulse is enough, which surprises me. Dragon Pulse and the Dragon Pulse, neither one of you kills each other, who wins speed time? It's Strict Sceptile. They go into Sneasler, but the Ganadel does outspeed. Just going for Hyperion just to get some damage in. Poison Jab kills the Alkazam. Last but not least is Salamence, which Salamence can't finish off the Sneasler. Gets the Poison, doesn't matter too much. All you have left is Alkazam, which can it kill from here? Okay, you're going for um, Recover. This Salamence, okay, it's still alive. Does it get a crit? Going for a Hydro Pump is interesting. But you don't get a crit, so you do get taken out by Poison. Okay, we got another Shelly Yu-Gi-Oh versus a Creeper. Alvantula lead forces the Jinx out. You go in the Iron Hands. Iron Hands can um, ball this Galvantula very well. Shell is very new, and I think one thing he needs to work on is, is switching. But even then, like, the way he w was performing, he isn't doing that well. I mean, no, he is doing well. Sorry, sorry. I didn't mean to mean. For, for once, I swear. Because, like, he would have won the last game if, won if he just used Hyper Beam instead of Body Swam. But even then, he still forced a tie. Going in the right on, this right on, unfortunately, is going to be very scared of that Jinx. Shelly knows this, which is in the Starmie. Oh, God. You hate to see it. In fact, I hate to see it so much, I'm going to skip. Oh, God. Uh, this is going to... I actually don't know if... I don't know if Shelly knows that you can't break out Freeze in Gen 1. Oh, God. Yeah, that was a game. And this is someone that also knew. Yanny Bunny. I don't think I've seen them before. Uh, going for Hypno. Hypno misses Hypnosis. You go into Zamazenta. Zamazenta goes for Reflect. Gets Paralyzed. You just go for White Screen as well. Interesting. Now you just go for Slash. And Slash actually does decent damage. You're not getting a special drop so far. That's good. I don't think you have rest, I imagine. Go in the walking wake. Okay, I like it. Going for Dragon Claw just to break the sub. Great idea. You do get the paralysis. That's nice. Going in the Alkazam. Hydro Pump does decent damage. But Alkazam could win the 1v1 even without it being paralyzed. But again, that special drop does mean you can just get a free a recover in. They have Chansey. You go into Hypno. Chansey tries to go for Toxic, but it doesn't work. A Tauros does get the KO with Hyper Beam. You go in the Crobat. Alright. Or should I say the Crow Goat? Hits up in Confusion. You switch out in the Iron Hands. They go into Alkazam. They go for Substitute. Okay, that's also pretty neat. Psychic will be a Tuba KO, but you go for Earthquake, which is just not enough, unfortunately. Oh, and the Crobat. Crobat can definitely revenge kill with Poison Jab. You have Chansey. You're going back to the Rhydon. You eat the Thunder Wave, but you're slower. And Blizzard will be enough to KO there. You have no choice but to go in the Tauros. But even that's pretty scary. Critical body slam is nice, but Chansey can always heal. Hyper Beam barely doesn't get the kill. Oh god. Uh, do you switch in the- I can kind of see you switching into Zamazenta there. Or maybe not, but okay, now you do. Now you go for the Slash. You will get some decent damage in. And body slam isn't really doing that much to you. We do get fully paralyzed, which stinks. Your last Pokemon's Iron Hands, which Toro definitely fears. You, I, okay, you're calling the switch, which I can respect. A critical Blizzard will be enough to kill. Go in the Algazam, because you have no other choice, which really sucks. So now we have Chansey versus Algazam. A critical Psychic was actually pretty big there. Uh, both. Okay, was like paralysis luck is gonna be annoying. But if it's just Iron Hands, depending on how much damage the Alkazam is in, 
The Iron Hands could kill, but it's hard to tell. Hyper Beam does kill there. Crobat kills. Crobat can also kill the Chansey as well. Wizard is a big threat to this Chansey. Uh, I should put this back on. Okay, well, too late for that, but still, that was a good game. Rebel Push versus Viva Resistance. This should be fun. Starry vs. Algazam. We, we've seen this before. Go up in the Chansey, and that has another Chansey. Robo Push with their signature white screen Chansey, which is always interesting to see. Gudra here gets the burn on Iron Hands. That's really good. Alkazam gets a revenge kill. You go in the Chansey, you go in the Starmie. You have these two try to beat each other up. But Chansey has Thunderbolt, so it manages to win. Vespa Quinn, uh, Okos, and Naganadel. Also, Okos is Slowbro, but Slowbro can survive a critical attack order. Uh, Vespa Quinn is such a very good offensive Pokemon. Like, it's actually just insane. Alkazam Mirror. Tauros gets sent in. It can... Yeah, I think the Rubble Push uh, wins. Our Enhance is really scary. Round 2 between these two. Let's see how this one goes. Also, I'm just going to put a lot of these in Hyper Fast just because I do have a lot of replays to go over. Sorry about that, but the tournament is going to be happening soon. And tomorrow's going to be the last video where I react to just a crap ton of replays. Because very soon, we're going to be having the tournament. So yeah. Uh, so far, we have a Swobro versus Chansey. White screen Chansey definitely is very annoying for Swobro in particular. So I don't think it's going to catch on. But I do think for Rebel using it as like a signature, it will have its place. But it really just depends on who Rebel faces, really. Also, I just realized this Gucci's called Bro Bro. And also, it got the freeze on Chansey. Alkazam getting a nice sweep here. Okay, this is actually looking pretty insane. Yeah, forfeiting there. Yeah, probably for the best. Now we have Zaganthias versus Sotina. The Pinsir lead is still always interesting. Galvantula does decent damage to this Iron Hands, and I do mean that genuinely. I would... I guess you just feel like you're... It's not worth switching in anything. Uh, Galvantula managed to survive a Earthquake, though. That's surprising. You take this opportunity to switch? Yes, you do. This Iron Hands is in a lot of danger suddenly, and you still have Galvantula in the back. Okay, this thing can... Threaten, I would have gone for Thunder, honestly. Just because you're mostly trying to fish for that crit in the first place. Iron Hands might be able to get the kill here. Yes, it does. You're going to Naganadel. You don't get the critical Dragon Pulse. Hyper Beam does about half. Enough to this uh, Naganadel, honestly. Going the right on, you go for Body Slam, trying to fish for a... Uh, paralysis. The Freeze is very unfortunate. Going to Alakazam, you go for Thunder Wave, you can just try to heal, and Body Slam is a crit, oh no. Okay, that's unfortunate. Uh, that's a little more fortunate though. That too. The Ghanaga gets the revenge kill, but is Ice Beam enough to kill from here? I don't know, but it looks like Psychic definitely is. Pinsir gets a free sword stance. Pinsir's suddenly looking very scary. Uh, I don't think you get the freeze. Going the right on. And yeah, how do you deal with this Pinsir now? What's your last Pokemon? Haxorus. Okay. That's definitely one way to deal with it. Get a free sword stance in. That's kind of scary. Earthquake's not enough to kill. Hyper Beam is also not enough to kill. So Haxorus might just win the game here. The last Pokemon's is best point, and yeah, it is not surviving a critical rock slide. Second Theus is one. Let's see how game two does. Now we have lead Hypno versus Galvantula. Bug Bite scares it out. You go into Haxorus. We have Crobat. Crobat goes for Substitute. Poison Jab does some good damage, but not enough. But luckily, with that Substitute, you will be able to finish off the Galvantula. You go back into Hypno, no special drop, 
you go in the right on somehow calling the thunder wave you do the right on does get put to sleep out of all pokemon i think right can probably survive the most like free turns right does not get the crit but does it get the paralysis mean this horse can finish off the alakazam goes for blizzard doesn't hit a uh, uh Iron Hands does use Well Kick. You don't see it too much, but it is a decent move on Iron Hands, in all honesty. I. Yeah, we. Another, another Chansey versus Alkazam. I've seen this so many times. I promise when I get to the actual tournament, I won't, like, skip it. At least I don't plan on doing it. Iron, just Iron Hands, though. Probably not gonna do that well. Then again, this Iron Hands does have Thunder, which is a little unique. Same with the Well Kick. But no, Rhydon was able to get the kill. Game 3. Okay, Galvantua Mirror. This should be fun. Second Thesis Galvantua dumping in a much better position. Wait, if you had Galvantua, shouldn't you have just switched that at the beginning? I think that's a bit of a misplay for Slatina there. But still, their Galvantula survived while Zack and Thesis didn't. Earthquake doesn't do enough. Max Roosters definitely does, though. Hmm. I wonder if he had explosion on that. Who knows? Overall, though, um... I'm gonna... I, I don't think I've said this yet for the replays. But... Uh, for this tournament... Along with it just being a fun tournament, it's also going to decide who the other Generation Jumble Council members will be. Also, Min Shao, that was actually pretty cool. Too bad it can't be Iron Hands 1v1, even with the Sword Stance. And a Chansey Mirror is going to be w whatever. But, uh, yeah. Uh, this tournament is also going to decide who is going to be the main, like, five members of the Generation Jumble Council. Now, all three of us already have who we think are going to be our favorites. But uh, but we're, there's a lot of things we're going to be considering. Going to be looking at how they do in the tournament. As well as just... We're going to try to see how much knowledge they gen like generally have. It's it's going to be fun. Uh, Fire Blast does a lot of damage to Galvantua, but doesn't get the kill. Ice Beam is going to be very annoying. But Gudra take that very, very, very well. Wow. Uh, Chansey is probably going to win this 1v1, though. Uh, I guess not. I guess the Chansey got frozen. Sometimes you're just going to be better. And the, man, that, that Chansey freezing is so unfortunate. Slash will get the kill on Gudra. But when the Chansey, Slash is always going to do a Decent chunk. Yeah, this could be annoying for Robo. You go for soft boiled. Galvantra's fully paralyzed, so white white screen chancy will get the kill. Going for iron hands, which this chancy could just not threaten at all. You go for a well kick, which will do more than enough damage. Going with the Alkazam. But I, honestly, yeah, I, I I would have tried going for the kill there as well. You definitely had the potential to finish off. Haxorus will do like barely not half, but it's probably a damage range. A damage who needs a damage range? We can just get hit a critical hyper beam. Okay, you have Alkazam. They probably paralyze each other. Yes, they do. Let's see who wins this exchange. Looks like it's gonna be Zack and Theus. Vespaquin will get the kill there. But unfortunately, it will not survive the right on. Your last Pokemon is Iron Hands. And you do much better when the right on is confused, that's for sure. Well, Kick will do a lot of damage. You get the Flidge. That might just be it. Because I don't see how a chance he's surviving a Sword Stance at Iron Hands. So once again, right, Iron Hands is, wins Rebel Push so many wins. It's actually kind of like scary. Galvantra switched to the Alkazam. It game pair was actually huge. Definitely not good at all. Okay, let's see here. Gujo vs. Alkazam is interesting. I would say. 
But I think this Gooch is definitely going to lose 1v1. You were forced to put your star me, but you get the special drop, unfortunately. As long as you don't get special drops, you can definitely burn off the sweep turns. But that crit is very unfortunate. Uh, same there. Starmie gets sent back in, but it doesn't look like it can do a lot. Thunder kills the Chansey, or the Starmie, I mean. And I think Anthony Cavantra kind of needs to paralyze the Chansey before it can try to kill its Slash. Low Kick will definitely do more than enough damage there. Vespaquin with a critical attack order is not enough. Rock Sweat kills Vespaquin. Alakazam can finish up the Chansey, and it can definitely do great against Second Thesis Alakazam since it wasn't paralyzed first. So let's see what Zacanthius does here. Okay, going into Haxorus, your only real move. And it's not looking too good for you. This Alakazam is still incredibly threatening. Rhydon finishes off. And, okay, unlike uh, that last time, this time, Zacanthius does get the win. Alright, Jaithane versus... Sultina. A Gengar getting to sleep at first, that's definitely unfortunate. Going into Salamence immediately, but it might not pull off. Why do so many people use Confused Ray Gengar? It's not good. It's not good at all. Going into Gudra, and then switching to the Walking Wake, but a Critical Dragon Claw will in fact kill you. So it looks like Sultina's using a Drag Mag team, which is pretty cool. Going into Salamence to resist that um, attack order, you go for Dragon Claw, because I guess you were assuming they were going to switch into something else, which is a pretty fair assumption to make. They go into Jolteon instead of, uh, Walking Wake, but I think that's probably a good call. Going into Salamence, Earthquake can do a lot of damage, but even a crit I know is not enough to kill. A crit here might, but you don't get it. Hyper Beam, Barely doesn't kill. Salamence finishes off the Iron Hands. Psychic kills Salamence. Going into Jolteon, you paralyze Alkazam. Thunderbolt can do a decent chip. You switch in the Walking Wake. No, you're going to Sneeze or even better. Alkazam is oh going not the Gon the Gonadel. Okay, that's a that's a good idea. Hyper Beam does not get the kill there. You paralyze in the Gonadel. That is huge news for Sneezewer. Getting a critical Thunderbolt also helps a lot. It puts you in damage range for Walking Wake. Uh, Walking Wake, I'm pretty sure, isn't paralyzed. So yeah, it can finish off Dragon Claw. And now this Walking Wake can just soften up the Alakazam. Or it can just finish it off entirely. I really don't know where Walking Wake is going to rank when it comes to the... Viability rankings once we do those for what's it called uh, after the first tournament. Gujra tanks a thunder very easily. It will hit back with a fire blast, doesn't get the burn or the crit. Slash is going to do good damage. Gujra is fully paralyzed. You go for another slash. This is actually looking pretty scary for Robo. Ice Beam gets a kill, but now this Gujra can be revenge killed by Rhydon. So Starmie gets taken out, but I don't think it has Surf, it has Blizzard. You get the Freeze, doesn't look like it. Uh, let's see what else they do. Iron Hands, okay. They're, you're both paralyzed, so it's kind of equal footing, but definitely Zack and Theus is way more threatening. Yeah, especially with that. Yeah, I think it was fair saying it again. Hyper Beam does get the kill, but when the Starmie, Critical Blizzard will kill you. Going to Alakazam. Uh, confusing the Chansey is something. But going for Defend Order, it was probably worth it, but definitely didn't work out for you. Which is unfortunate. I don't think... Yeah, I'm pretty sure... Zach and Theus just wins this pretty definitively. But still... Uh, good job from Robo. Alright. Hyphen versus... Okay, I don't know why I called, it, called his name that. I might just call him Weird Faint, because I know for a fact that's how you say it. Or actually, I'll just ask him next time I'm in VC with him. 
He VCs regularly in the server. By the way, you should join the Discord server. You still have some time to join the tournament if you haven't already. And right now we're currently at, I think, 21 members? So we can definitely use some extra people. It's gonna be a lot of fun, and you can also play with people here, or be in VCs. There's a lot of things you can do. A critical attack order will kill the Starmie though. And it has a very good chance of beating the Chansey 1v1 as well. Chansey goes for Ice Beam, does get the crit. I would say unfortunately, but it's already taken out two Pokemon. Going into Vespaquin. Vespaquin, I think it's just not a good matchup for the Sneasor. Sneasor survives the attack order. Poison Jab finishes off Vespaquin. Go in the Alkazam, you win the Speed Tie. Don't see on Paralyze to the Alkazam. And yeah, with so many more Pokemon that, like, uh, Jaifane has at the disposal, it's just... It's just not good. You can't win this. It's pretty unwinnable. Can I hit my attack? No? Okay. Very well said. Starmie lead. Paralyzes the Gengar. Doesn't actually go for Hypnosis. Just going for a critical Thunderbolt. That's huge. A critical Psychic is also huge there. Vespa Quinn will not get to do much this match. Going into Jolteon, you paralyze the Chansey. Going for Double Kick, you get the crit. You're fully paralyzed, that's good. Okay, that would have been a crit, unfortunately. The Gudra goes for Fire Blast, you switch in the Gengar. Go for Confuse Ray. Going into Salamence, that's kind of risky, but I can respect it. And now you can double Revenge Kill. Going for a Hyper Beam. Okay, I like it. Do you have Explosion? Please tell me you have Explosion. We'll never know. We'll, we'll never freaking know. Which is unfortunate. Going into Jolteon. Oh, you, you block that Thunder Wave. Substitute is weird, but it looks like it's doing alright. Is Double Kick really the best move here? Or actually, in this situation, I'm pretty sure you're just better off just, you know... Switching out. Yeah, it looks like that's what they realize. They go on the Salamence. A critical Dragon Claw will do a lot of damage. Going for Thunder Wave, but we already know the Salamence has Hyper Beam. But instead, it just goes for a critical Dragon Claw. That is huge. Dragon Claw will finish off the Gudra. They go back to the Alakazam. They try to go for Recover. You're fully paralyzed. That sucks. You go for Hyper Beam, which does not kill. Yeah, you kind of have just finishes off instead of healing. But now you just have Jolteon, which revenge kills you. Iron Hands, though, can definitely well out this Jolteon very easily. You just go for a Substitute, which here I can definitely see you doing. You're just trying to try to try to get that, what's it called, that full paralysis. You're just trying to solve for as much as possible. Which didn't work out for you there, but it definitely could have. Going in the Walking Wake, Surf does a lot of damage. Hyper Beam does not get the KO. You go for Surf, all they have left is Vespaquin. I feel like Flamethrower would have been better there. Am I wrong? But it doesn't matter because you have Poison Jab with Sneezor. Okay, that was a nice game. Now we have another one between these two. This should be fun. Goltion versus Alakazam. It's cool seeing Robo Push using a different lead. At least I think so. Or um, am I am I blanking out right now? I might be. Either way, Alga's and Mirror, you know how this goes. It just depends on which one gets better paralysis and special drops. Same thing when it goes to Chansey. Wizard does uh whatever. But with a special drop, it's gonna be annoying. But they're just switching out a lot, healing. It's mostly stuff you've seen before. I don't have much I can really commentate. And actually, one thing I will say. Um, okay, Polyrath is pretty cool. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry about that. But one thing I will say. On like Season 1, I've been noticing that I've been having to critique a lot less. Seems like the players are both generally better now. And since the format is just so much more... Even though it's much bigger, I'm going to say it's a bit more balanced. So, 
players just like in general are just nowhere near the amount of misplaying I saw in season one. In general, people are getting way more experience, which is really cool. Okay, Lord Acromox versus uh, Minari. This should be fun. Uh, bottom right for their Vesper Queen. That's funny. I, I can respect the uh, right on play there. Essentially, you were just fishing out to see what they had. And also, it could be turned to burn sweep. Going on the Lapras. Lapras is pretty cool. I think it has the potential to make it the OU. But. I just don't know if we'll see enough usage for that. Okay, so that gets killed. And... Uh, Alakazam? It will... Okay, I'm not, I'm not sure why I'm brain fighting right now. I'm just talking. I apologize for that. I think Weppers is faster. So yeah, Blizzard will do decent damage. You go for Confuse Ray, you might as well... It's going decently well for you so far. Okay, is Confuse Ray going to be a problem? I might need to discuss this in the next Generation Jumble Council meeting. The Gonadel has gone before to switch out. Going to Zamazenta. Gets completely walled by the Gengar. You're forced to go into Vespaquin of all things. Honestly, this Gengar is incredibly threatening. Oh, okay, that's bad. You, I, I'm only realizing now Minari has their entire team up, basically. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's clear who's gonna win this. Probably gonna be Minari. The Vespaquin does decent damage, but it's not enough. All you have is the Gonadel. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, so Tina versus Minari. It's always fun when these two fight. Not so much with Hypno. I'm so goddamn tired of seeing this thing. Let's just start doing some skipping. It. I hate Hypno so much. You guys have no idea. I do not like Hypno at all. It's not a fun Pokemon. It has a garbage design. All for all, it's just no. Also, I like the name Saltfish for Starmie. It's a shame that the Iron Hands couldn't wake up in time, because it could have been a big threat there. A 1v1 between these two, where the Wapper surprisingly manages to win. Confuse Ray won't get Paralysis is annoying. You get another Poison Jab, you get another Confuse Ray. Thunderbolt, you will be forced to switch out. But that's good. Okay? This Starmie got some free hits in. That's good. Switching the Iron Hands takes the Blizzard easily. A critical Earthquake does not kill you, but you are still asleep. Going into your own Tauros, which will definitely finish off the Starmie. And has Thunderbolt. That's spicy tech. You didn't really need to reveal it, though. Oh, uh, yeah, the Starmie's gonna die no matter what. And it's not like Thunderbolt would have done a lot to Gengar either. You go into Hypno. Hypno can do a pretty bad job taking this Gengar in all honest honesty. And it and the Hypno just gets back to sleep. Deserved. Hypno is still not waking up. It's completely useless. Stop using it. A Confuse Ray is also a pretty big, big deal. Actually, in general, how does I don't think Sotina can beat this Gengar. You need confusion luck, but that's not gonna happen when. Oh god. Yeah, uh, there we go. That that's the end of the game for sure. Okay, I think there's another game with these guys. Okay, doesn't look like it. It's second theus for strict septile. This should be fun. Uh, let's see here. The Galvantula has parallel each other, and now it's probably gonna be a slash war. Should be fun to watch. It always usually is. Because you never really know who's going to win. Uh, um, right now it looks like it might be Zack and Theus, but we'll have to see. Uh, okay, you switch out. Why do you guys keep paralyzing Galvantulas when you have Brighton on the back? I just, 
I just don't understand the thought process here. Hydro Pump does get the kill on the Galvantua, though. A Alakazam versus Chansey again. Also, like, I know it might seem like I'm not enjoying the format, because a lot of times I am usually skipping the Chansey versus Alakazam. That's not true. Like, I do feel like Chansey versus Alakazam is a very fair match, and I think it's not... I don't think it's not entertaining, but it can last a while. So that's what I will usually just put on hyper fast. But also, another reason is because I've just seen it so many times. I just do not have much else to say, really, for the most part. I'll probably have more to say for the tournament, but that's because for the tournament, there'll be way more of a story going on, you know? So, like, I can try to make it more dramatic, and a critical Dragon Claw is pretty huge. Just in general, this Salamence put in a lot of work, it seems like, and it's pretty cool. I like Salamence. So, Tina versus Wizard Jesus. Going with the Uncommon Executor lead, but pretty cool. It paralyzes the Starmie. Do you have Boom? Yes, you do. You get the crit. So, these two on pretty even playing field. Especially when you have Alakazam Mirror. Okay, you go for Substitute, but Substitute cannot block you from the Thunder Wave. You're going to have to hope your opponent doesn't know that. But they did. But still, I guess this Alakazam is pretty annoying with Sub. It does actually help you beat other Psychic types, now that I think about it. Ah, maybe that's actually worth considering. Who knows? Uh, so far, it's still just a whatever mirror, though. But I do like Substitute. That actually is pretty interesting tech. Which I might need to consider. In general, something I think I'm going to do more for this, re for this tournament is... Probably make more new teams on the spot. I feel like I've now done enough practicing to where I... I have a pretty good idea about what to use against my opponent. Uh, Critical Dragon Pulse is unfortunate. Golem takes out the... Uh, it can take a few things. Does it go have Explosion? We don't know. But it doesn't matter because Latina does have Clamp on Cloyster, which gets the kill. Okay, let's move on. Looks like we have round 2 between these guys. A Pincer Weed again. Bug Bite is super threatening. It's still only a 2 a KO, which is actually kind of disappointing. But Bug Bite does a lot of damage to Armaldo. Holy crap. Earthquake with a crit is enough to finish off the Armaldo. Going into a Nihilab, which is forced to use Screech, unfortunately. Swellbro, though, can just completely wall this Nihilab and just set up completely. Going to Chansey. Using Surf is interesting. But this chance he has Thunderbolt, so it could be going go very scary for Sotina. You have Rest. Let's just hope you don't get a crit. Starmie, just hope you don't have Thunderbolt. Okay. I don't really understand why, but maybe. Oh, okay, you're just trying to... You were trying to guarantee safety, but it didn't work out, unfortunately. Yeah, this swell bro just already won the game for Zotina. 100%. It's really hard to deal with swell bro once it fully gets set up. Oh, uh, it's even the special drops, which is not enough. I know I haven't get the revenge kill, sure, but you can just. Yeah. Alright, there we go. Let's see what else we got. Uh, Master Gemstone again. Okay. Been a while since I've seen him. But I'm excited. Using Lee Tauros. That's pretty interesting. The Gengar does get the confusion and win speed tie in order to get the hypnosis. A Jai Fane should just try to go for the lottery with those odds. Just holy crap. Gengar Mirror. Okay, so I thought Master Gemstone was going to do something anime related. And I guess he could. I guess this could be, like, Gen 1 Pokemon that... Okay, never mind. Also, Venusaur. We don't see a lot of that. That's pretty cool. Razor Leaf is gonna get a crit. Honestly, I don't even think Venusaur with growth is that bad. 
obviously Sword Stance is way better. And obviously, um, Razor is always going to be a crit. But that could be good for specifically for defensive purposes. Just raising your special so you can tank at least one attack or an extra attack from the Psychic types. The Salamence is going to have no choice though but to try to fish for a uh, critical earthquake which it doesn't get. You go in the Walking Wake, it revenge kills. You go back in the Venusaur, you get the growth. But this thing is quad weak to bug. That's unfortunate. Going into Onyx. That's funny. You have Dragonite. Which you go for Toxic. That's actually really bad when there's only one Pokemon left. Hyper Beam gets the kill. But this Walking Wake is definitely faster. And it gets the Critical Dragon Claw for the KO. Uh, so very interesting team though. I would say. We have round two with these guys. This should be fun. Galvantia lead versus Gudra. And Gudra should be able to win the 1v1. But Jaifeng has M Moltres. So that is very good. And Thunder Gudra is terrifying. But I don't think you can get paralyzed if you switch into Iron Hands. Switching into a Niawape, depending on this thing's moveset. This Iron Hands just can't do much. Earthquake doesn't do that much there. You switch into Kadabra. Uh, I guess you're just using Alakazam too. Very nice. Especially when you get a special drop. That just means you're just the greatest player alive. Full Paralysis there. Unfortunate. A second special drop. Also unfortunate. <laughs> oh, that did so little damage. You get the crit. No, you don't. Okay, this is going to be really hard to deal with. Snorlax, though, might be able to kill here? Oh, it's Amnesia Snorlax. Okay, yeah, uh, yeah, that's where you realize, oh, wait, no, I'm, I'm, I'm screwing up, buddy. You get the burn. That is absolutely huge. You f get the flinch, unfortunately. You miss a low kick. You go for a rest. Okay, that is, okay, I never thought about Amnesia Rest Fire Blast. That's, that actually might be really good. I actually might need to use that myself. You go into Alakazam. You are forced to switch into Tauros. Which is unfortunate. But to be honest. Your Snorlax is way more valuable here. You don't get the. You do get the Paralysis. That's actually really good. Body Slam does KO the Alakazam. You go into Galvantula. You get the Critical Hyper Beam. Take out the Galvantula. Go into Vespaquin. And this is just not good. Uh, this Tauros has put in so much work. And with Amnesia Snorlax in particular in the back, it's just very scary. Vespaquin gets paralyzed. You go for Toxic. Actually, with Toxic, that probably is just better than Poison Sting. Oh, a critical Hyper Beam. You gotta hate to see it. You have no choice but to switch into Moltres. But with the Poison, you don't even get to do any damage to it. Last is Lapras, and... Fire Spin is just like your one hope. They switch into the Ganadel. You go for Dragon Pulse. You can just switch for crits now. Uh, do you get it though? No, you don't. It doesn't matter though. Moltres can't do much. Oh my god, that's unfortunate. Uh, do you go for Agility? No, you don't. You probably should have. Fire Blast is going to do a lot of damage, but even with the burn, you're just going to get KO'd. Yeah, GG, the gemstone. Oh, you should have gone for... You did have Earthquake, right? Oh, I guess we didn't see it. So I guess we don't know if it does or not. Going for another Screech, just trying to get a lot of defense drops in. Go for Body Slam. But even because of the burn, it's just not doing a lot of damage. A low kick is super threatening, especially with a crit. So it's up to this Lapras in order to win. Which it might. A critical blizzard definitely helps you. I think Gemstone does in fact win this game. GG. Alright. Let's see what else we got here.
We have a game three between these guys. This should be fun. Toro's lead is something I can actually kind of respect. I can definitely appreciate just the immediate damage. You don't get the crit there, so it doesn't work out here. But still, this Alga's at half HP. It needs to be incredibly careful. Zapdos could be threatening. You don't get the crit, unfortunately. A drill pick does a lot of damage. Hyper Beam. Okay, that's spicy. It just doesn't work out, unfortunately. Alkazam can force and can go for special drops. And it's probably going to be the Zapdos 1v1, if I had to guess. We don't see a lot of Zapdos, to be honest. It's probably still good enough to be OU, but it's really surprising. Especially with how great Zapdos was in Season 1. I know there's a lot of Dragon types, but I don't think they're good enough to where it makes you not want to use Zapdos. Zapdos just seems like a very damn good Pokemon. I don't even know what to think, though, in all honesty. Okay, we have another fight with these guys. Alkazam went for Rest, which is interesting. And the Rap Walk is very unfortunate. Seismic Toss near Chansey. You don't see that much Seismic Toss Chansey, to be honest. Vespaquin kills the Chansey, though. That's huge. And uh, ironically, Toxic is the best way to deal with a Jill Rap Dragonite. So that's funny. Hyper Beam. Kill. Even though it's just regular poison, doesn't matter because you get the crit Hyper Beam for the win. <laughs> okay, let's see. Do I have any other games of Gemstone? Oh, yes, we do. We have a fourth game with these guys. This should be fun. Let's see how the Taurus Elite does this time. Does half health. Algorithm is forced to recover. A critical body swim does most of your health. Okay, if, if this Taurus doesn't get... Okay, never mind. You're going to Glycopod, but still. This Algazam is in a lot of trouble. Why aren't you healing, though? Okay, now you heal. But you gave... Snorox can win Psychic? That's weird. But also... Not that... Wait, that actually might be... Okay, wait, that, that actually might be relevant. Holy shit. You use that, you can fight back against the fighting types along with having Fire Blast. A Rock Spike kills the best one easily. You block Paralysis. Ice Beam doesn't do too much. You don't get the crit, unfortunately. Toro survives, gets the Hyper Beam, does get the crit, takes out the Chansey. You go into Duck Trio. Personally, I would have tried going for the paralysis just one, at least one more time. I think it could have been worth it. Duck Trio gets taken out. Going to Tentacruel, you go for Poison Jab, get the poison. <coughs> but it's not enough. Now you can just Poison Rap Walk, which is scary. Or you can use the Pivot into Tauros, that's actually probably better. Oh, both Dragon types do kind of fold to Tauros in all honesty. Rap is the only thing you can do against this, but it's not going to do very well for you, most likely. Uh, yeah, actually, hmm. Actually, no, Botanical is faster. Yeah, there you go. Okay, Cyber DJ versus Latina. This actually should be fun. Jinx lead versus Galvantula. You stay in with Jinx. You put the Galvantula to sleep, but to be honest, that's very manageable. Chansey versus Alkazam, but this Alkazam definitely has the better matchup at the moment. Against the Jinx too, maybe. Oh, that is scary. Okay, yeah, the Rock Swipe was a guaranteed KO there. Gengar versus Gudra. The Critical Poison job does get you the win. You're forced to sacrifice Chansey, which is unfortunate. Going into Alkazam against their Alkazam. Going to Starmie. Are we go we're going to see what battle between these two looks like. So Tina's Alkazam is definitely just putting in so much work for this battle so far. And 
Cyber already has taken out two po or has three Pokemon taken out. It's just not looking good. This Rhydon is also just threatening in of itself. And you can definitely sacrifice it. Just have to do some good damage in. Wizard does not get the KO. Going to the Gonadel. Oh, Critical. Okay, that's unfortunate. But still, I'm pretty sure... Oh, no, the Galvanter's asleep. No, this is still anyone's game. Oh, that is... Oh, that is scary. Okay, so Cyber DJ wins. GG. Now we have Funny Gaming versus Wizard Jesus. I'm not sure if these guys have fought before. This should be fun. Okay, we have... <laughs> Also, just like the name the Jumbler for Alakazam. That's pretty neat. Okay, a paralyzed Alakazam very much fears Normaldo. Goes for the Sword Stance. I can definitely respect that play. Going for Screech, but Earthquake is a 2 hit KO. This Annihilate is not going to do enough damage in time. The Crit, though, does in fact save it. But not enough to actually go there, Armaldo. I think it's fine because it definitely did enough to where the Armaldo was put in a revenge kill range. So the Armaldo definitely it was no longer a threat because of that Annihilate. A Sword Sands, yeah, setting up there is pretty good. And Fire Blast Chansey was actually pretty good tech. But Starmie gets another KO. Switch to the Gondadel, you don't get the Paralysis. You have Alakazam, we have another Starmie vs. Alakazam match. Starry vs. Alakazam, Alakazam vs. Alakazam, Chansey vs. Alakazam. These are by far the most uh, common battles here. And the best Pokemon does get the sweep. Okay. Wait, 69? I, I don't know where the 69 was. I might have to look for it later. As it, that is very important to my enjoyment. But now we have Shelly vs. Sotina. <sighs> oh, using Bug Mag. Or, I actually don't know... Bugged on? That's probably what you would call Shelly's team. But yeah, we need Zucky Taurus like would be the worst thing you could possibly even have. And I kind of find that funny. Uh, we have Starmie versus... I, I don't know how much this Zucky Taurus is going to do in this matchup. And this Armado can definitely win 1v1, I think. Hey, I guess go for another Earthquake. Or Sword Sands, I mean. Yeah, the Armado wins, but it gets taken out by the Alakazam. But the Alakazam, just in general, is less effective on a Bug Mag team like this, or Bug Ton. Still, I don't think Bug Ton is a good sample team. Because I do think the Bug types are pretty frail in nature. Well, Sotina does get the win, so GG. I think that was actually a pretty well deserved win. Considering, with, especially with Weed Executor, they were kind of at a disadvantage from the very start. But now we have round two. Let's see how this goes. You go for Slash, just going for consistent damage. I can respect it. But Shelly needs to learn to switch out. <laughs> In fact, the moment I'm done with this recording, I'm just going to say in Shelly's DMs, you need to switch your God Galvantua out of the damn Iron Hands. Oh, uh, goddamn. Uh, Sarmie, though, gets to kill Armaldo. We have a... Another match between these two. Anyone's game, really. Wow, that Star Moose is getting, putting a lot of work in. Holy crap. I, I do not know how the match so quickly got out of Shelly's favor. But Sotina gets another win. Uh, GG. Now we have G versus Sotina. That's unfortunate, but it happens. Glad to see that they actually switch into their... Why? I don't get that at all. It looks like I'm, I finally get a CG's mono electric team, which they've talked about. Ah, oh, Pin Missile Jolteon, that makes me unhappy. You got a free switch in the... Raichu, sure, but... Yeah, I don't think it's going to surprise anyone, but Mono Electric is suffering a lot. I tried testing, like, a Drag Magtor of Electric Team. It didn't really work out too well. A lot of times I just felt like 
especially for Jolteon, I would rather just be using literally anything else. But I think I think G did the best they possibly could. Which I can't really fault them for that. Also, white screen Zapdos is interesting. But that is not the thing you want when you're going against Everfuck Chansey. Oh, this is so unfortunate. Oh, the freeze is just... That's very damning. But even so, it takes a lot of Ice Beams to actually kill the Zapdos because of Light Screen. But Executor goes boom, so that ends the match. We're getting close to the end. And I'm... I think I just ran out of water. Unfortunate. I'm going to have to power through this. But I think I can do it. Okay, point is on hyper fast. Jinx Wave was kind of risky in a way, but looks like it paid out for them. Also, I'm realizing now this is actually a real team. Uh, you have two ice types, which actually isn't that bad of an idea either. Honestly, I think the main thing I'm kind of taking from this turn from this season is that it seems like you you're just really good. If you just, in a way, double down, it doesn't matter if it's two normal types, two psychic types, two ice types, or multiple, like, as much as three dragon types. It seems like, in general, you are, okay, a meditate is still legal. I'm going to have to make sure PG knows that. But either way, though, um... A lot of people just seem to like really using two Pokemon of a certain type. And it, it doesn't end up being bad either. Because every time you use multiple of one type, it does seem to give you a pretty good advantage. Whether it be giving you more consistent ice resistance, psychic, etc. I like it a lot and it makes me want to experiment. So I'm probably going to be doing that very soon. Maybe even after like I have some like a dinner or something. We'll have to see. And Reflect Snorlax is actually really good. You don't see a lot of it. But I think it got killed by a crit. And the Annihilate Web does take out the... Uh, okay, the last Pokemon Sneasler. So this is not the thing you want to face against in the Gonadel. Unfortunate. But still, that was still a pretty close match. I would say all, all intents and purposes. Round three between these guys. This should be fun. Uh, the Snorlax lead with Selfish Stroke is awesome. Same with you think freaking Raticate. <laughs> uh, I didn't even know Raticate can warn Blizzard. Uh, Blizzard does. Yeah, honestly, that Raticate actually did commit a lot. That's pretty funny. Let's see. Uh. I don't know why I... It, it's Chansey versus... I, I really do not know what else to say there. Like, really. <laughs> okay, right now I'm just looking in the server. And someone just randomly made a poll just asking if I'm stupid. What the hell? Like, why is this... I, I don't understand anything anymore. Uh, let me, uh... I should probably look at, back at a few turns, though. Just see what I missed. Uh, Armada got a Sword Stand Sweep. That's nice. But, yeah, it looks like it's a little too, little too late. I probably would have gone for Agility with agility, with Moltres there. Honestly, with Agility, it's... Not that bad of an end game. It, even here, like as we saw, it was able to win at the end. That's pretty cool. Moltres might be better than I originally thought. But I don't know how good it actually is. Second time, I clicked on the sound button instead of the speed button. I think like, these last few matches might be a few matches between... Zach and Theus and Sultina. And normally, Zach and Theus always use the same team. 
It's always nice to see how, how he does better each time. And you know what else I just realized right now? It's been a while since I've actually seen Executor. So maybe it was it was it was used a lot at the beginning, but did Executor fall off? I don't know. There's a lot of things I might need to talk about with the Generation Jumble Council. We've been trying to have a meeting, but unfortunately, like it's just not been working out. We all of us just been like just not online at the same time. But we're gonna try to get one in before the actual. Uh, tournament starts but uh we'll have to see what happens okay so so far this is going also i just realized satina went with lead executor again very interesting you would think at this point okay she probably does know that the galvantula lead is always going to be a thing but so decided to go with it anyways because executor does legitimately have some good strong perp uh, niches without you know even if Jolteon gives it... Not uh, Jolteon. Uh... Galvantula. I, I can't talk right now. I am sorry. Hmm. At least we're almost some of these replays. Okay, round three between these guys. A different weight this time, finally. So Tina's finally learning. But... Actually, no, Galvantula gets two shot by Alkazam. It's not even that bad of a matchup to begin with. You just have to be careful of the crit. And I say be careful, even though, in all honesty, you do not have control over that. <laughs> wary. And I think it's better to say to be wary. And this slow bro is just a huge freaking threat to Zack and Theus. If he doesn't get a freeze... Okay, never mind, he got the freeze. He's just the best player in the world. And you can just set up a free sword stance. Uh, that's... Yeah, that's not good. A critical Dragon Pulse, though, definitely evens it out. Both these guys going for a Sword Stance, but Iron Hands being faster definitely is a huge benefit. Going for Rhydon, but you don't set up Substitute. You just take out the... Okay, uh, that was a strange play. And Chansey can take on this Nagana, though, pretty easily. It does a lot of damage to the Iron Hands as well. Enough to even get a kill... And now we only have two replays left. Another one between these two. Okay. Let's see how this one goes. In my... Wait, I don't... I don't get the... I don't get the Gengar's nickname, actually. In my room? Like, I'm not sure what that's supposed to mean. But cool for, uh... Zach and Theus for calling the explosion. Actually, this... Mm. Now that I'm really thinking about it, like, things are going pretty busy tomorrow. So this might be my last video just to reacting to a lot of stuff. But either way, though, uh, I don't know, we'll have to see. It depends on if I feel like reacting more or not. Or, hmm, actually, no. I gotta, I'm gonna be pretty busy with different videos. I need to get a... I don't need a council meeting up, but and able to, I might try to get some more how to use videos up. This is probably going to be the last uh, time we're acting to a whole bunch of replays until the tournament. And this is the first time I've seen anyone use a Moongus. Of course, it's Zast will be using it. Going for Toxic Specs as well. I guess you might as well. Blizzard gets a crit. That's good. But uh, Poison Jab's just better, in all honesty. For Needle King. Earthquake does good damage. Uh, Chansey gets the Reflect. So it barely survives. And now it could actually stall out this Needle King. But Needle King gets the crit. You sack off Amoongus there. Uh, probably for the best. I'm just going to assume this is a Mono Poison team. Which is interesting. Do you go for Rap? Yes you do. Going to Nagonadel which absorbs the Toxic Spikes. Oh, toxic spikes are so goddamn garbage in this in this gen. It's not even funny. Going in the ride on, you don't get the burn. You go try to go for it again. You might as well. This ride on is a massive threat to your team. You don't get it. You go in the Needle King. Blizzard will kill. Go in the Alkazam. You survive. You go for Earthquake, but it's not enough. 
Alakazam sweeps you. Man, who would have thought that mono psych or mono poison is bad when you're using a whole bunch of Alakazams and Starmies? And even the Gonadels. Yeah, that's just crazy. And two sword scenes are definitely not gonna be enough to save you from this Zamazenta. Okay, poison. Okay, a crit definitely would have helped, but as you can see there, even a crit Zamazenta tanked pretty well. Hyper Beam is also enough, so Slatina does get the win. I don't think they had another game. I think this was the last one. But overall, good replays as usual. Uh, this was a lot of fun. And I got a lot of work to do. Because this tournament is going to be very big. And I still need to try to find more people to actually play in it. So if you want to join the tournament, join the Discord server and like let me know. But overall, I think this is going to be a lot of fun. Thank you all for watching. This is Groundback. And until next time, I look forward to hearing from you.